What's up, everybody? Man, it's your boy, Big Play Slay. I know y'all been missing this sexy face of mine, but I'm back, man. It's been two months. It's been a long time coming, man. You know, it wasn't much to talk about. You know, football season was done, you know, so I would just know, handle my business, being a parent, hanging out with my kids. Man, your boy is really done got good in golf. I'm trying to tell you, man. So any golfers out there that golf, man, I'm with it, man. I'm learning still. Still shooting over 100. I ain't breaking 90 yet, but one time, and that's because um, I forgot even the rule. You know, when you get close to the putt, they just give you the putt. I already forgot the rule already, but other than that, man, I've been up here chilling, living the life, enjoying the family, the kids, and whatnot. Man, I just had my camp, man, my 10th camp for my city, man, Brunswick, Georgia, man, and this was a special one because I got to invite some players, man, so kids ain't just get to enjoy me. They got to enjoy other guys that was in the league, so I had a show. Shout out to my guys, man. Will Red, man, Casey Hayward, LeGarrette Blunt, Greg Newsom. you know, them some of the guys that came, those the four guys that came down and supported my camp, man, for the youth, and uh, it was a great thing for no man to come down because my camp is real big with kids and stuff, man. And where I'm from, the city is just, you know, they love it, they appreciate it, man. It's teaching guys, training guys. I had middle school and high school this year. Just try to teach them the game, teach them how to properly prepare for work and hear it from others besides myself. You know, they've been seeing me talk for 10 years. Now hearing guys that's around the league talk is uh, it's a good, better motivation, man. So it was a special camp for me this year, with year 10 of it. I'm wait, I'm. Very, very excited for year 11 camp already. I'm looking forward to it, man, because we just did it last weekend. And it's going to be on the YouTube. Y'all go check it out, man. It was fun. Had kids running 40s. Man, I had my mom running 40, and guess what she ran? A six, five, eight, something like that. I was surprised. I'm not going to lie. I was hyped for my mom, man. She young still. She is young still, so she was out there getting it, man. I'm going to have to put the video out there, man, so y'all can tune in and watch Mama Low get it in, man. Big time Miss Stephanie, you know, so uh, shout out to my mom, man. She was out there, one of the biggest supporters out there. She's out there doing her thing as well. I know my family always contribute to that. And, uh, you know, my city loving it, man. I'm always going to continue to keep doing that and blessing my city with it, man. But that was going on with me, man. I've just been really just getting active, learning, meeting new people, uh, getting better as well. You know, I got to get better. You know, I got to get back and get shaped, getting ready. I just got done training with Kamardi. Man, you know, me and him got some work in, man, learning from another veteran DB as well. Uh, even though I'm a bet myself, there's nothing wrong with learning the game even more. Uh, Kamari taught me a lot in a matter of a few hours. We was getting in, working. And, um, you know, I don't think he can't, hey, what he can't get off on me is how he make all them kids. My boy got a lot of kids. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my dog. He take care of all of them too. You know, so uh, I just told him, hey, you can teach me everything you know, but don't teach me that. You know, so <laughs> shout out to Kamari, you know, man, and Jaleel Johnson, man, for pick six up in Houston, man. Great group. You go get great work, man. Some of the best DB coaches, some of the best DB drills I done came a part of, man, because I, I travel around the world. And, you know, man, so uh, it was good to get some information from them guys, man. They helped my game, built my game up a little bit more this year, man. I'm going to take it into this season. It's getting close to season time, training camp, a wrap around the corner. I'm so excited. I've been missing football for a long time. It's an exciting year. Hurts coming back. And, uh, and, you know, we got to try to, you know, start from fresh over. It's a whole new team. So we got to bring it together, man. Training camp is really right around the corner, man, next week. I'm going to give y'all a life of the offseason going into training camp to training camp going into season. It gets real, you know. As so, of course, you know about OTAs and and all the other stuff. It's just voluntary and working out. So you come on, come in, you work out, get a little lift in, get a little conditioning, and you know you hang out with teammates. You learn the playbook. Definitely, if you got new coaches, you report early. If you got new coaches, so that makes your summertime even shorter. But right now, you know we don't got no new head coach or new nothing like that. So we get to report in at a certain time, certain day. We report the twenty fifth. So we're going in. First thing you got to get your mind ready for, not even the practice, not nothing. You got to get that mind ready for that condition test because they go find out if you've been conditioning and in the shape to be practicing. So how it goes, if you don't pass the condition test, you don't practice. So that's already there. So you got to have your mind ready for that. That's what I really do in this offseason. I'm on, I mainly just run a lot, make sure I'm in great shape, and then I let the drills come to me during – Camp, you know, I truly believe you got but so many cuts in your ankle. So I try to save all my cuts as possible. So I don't do too much cutting in the off season, like as in, you no, know, 
March, April, May, you know, all the way to June. I barely do any kind of backpedaling cut in between them times because I don't know when my last cut go be. So I try to save them all. So what I do is I get in great shape. I ride the Peloton. I go out there and run the hill or I'll go run the track. You know, I got a sister that runs track. So we kind of run together sometimes. So we do a lot of great things together. That's our bond with my kids and stuff. We kind of be active together, but I do not do no pedaling around that time like that. I do not. But when July gets here, I kind of get into it. I kind of get in myself and pedal and get my feet and get my feet under me, get my brakes ready. Cause like I said, you don't know when your last break go be. So I save them all. So right now I'm, I'm for sure getting into my pedals, you know, breaking here and there, you know, best shape of my life I need to be. But yes, man, you got to be ready for the condition test. Cause like I said, if you don't pass, you don't practice. And, and then you go run it again the next day. If you don't pass again, you go run it again the next day. So you're not going to do nothing but the condition test till you pass. And, and when it get to a point in time, some fines will come. They will find you if you do not pass this test. So that's the main part about it. You know, the practice part, we all cooking, cooking easy. Just practicing, you know, try to get better. But that condition test, oh, yeah, you can lose some money with that. And then you got to come in with the right weight. You know, you got weighing in, you got all that kind of stuff because you get fine for not wearing what you need to be wearing. So that's the main part about training count for me is making sure I don't lose no money out my pocket. So I'm making sure my weight is good. So if you get on a diet, you're on a protein, you on some type of whatever, make sure you come in with great weight, make sure you're in great condition. So when you're getting it done with that, getting it yourself into training count when you pass the test. So now you done passed it. Say, because I know I'm going to pass it. So now you're getting into work. You know, you ease yourself in. You ease with drills. Ease yourself because you don't want to overload yourself. That's why I think a lot of teams go wrong because some teams go into training camp at the condition test into a hard practice. And that's bad for me. That's bad. That's bad, you know, bad coaching, bad, bad all that. Cause coming from the condition test, if you don't ran one before, we call it a monkey in your back. That monkey stay on your back. For like two days, cause them back, them back muscles get tight, hamstrings get tight, and then you gotta go into the next day and try to compete at a high level. That's how you pull hamstrings. That's how you pull all type of muscles. So, the, you, you gotta take care of your body, and you know that's why I think the the leads coming to this time they starting to protect players first a lot more. They starting to understand that you just can't go straight into a hard practice. You know, I don't matter how much shape you can be in during the season. I mean, during the off season, you can't get into too much better shape during the season, you know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's not going to not gonna be something to prepare you for the uh, full game, 60 minutes, up and down the field, with, besides playing an actual full game. You don't play your actual full game until the first actual preseason game. So we do that. Then after that, man, you know, you chill, check into your hotel. And, you know, it's like, it ain't, it's, it's a good time now. It's, it's go time. And, you know, get your mind right. And get your focus. It's going to be you know, football, football, football. You know, my family know and understand that when training camp comes, daddy and the husband is locked in. So it's understanding and uh, they understand as well, man. That's a great thing you got to do is communicate with your family. So that's why I take my offseason so serious about me spending time with my family because once training camp comes and football season comes around, I got to be locked in because guys are depending on me to do my job at a high level. And, uh, you know, I want to win. The organization want to win. And that's all that thing is about. It's about winning. So, yeah, so that's how I go, man, as you get yourself ready for practice. And, you know, for for instance, like us right now, we got two joint practices. So, them things be intense. They be the most fun, honestly. You know, I'll be tired of getting to go on each other for two weeks. You practice against each other for, like, two weeks. Get affiliated with each other, you know, working on game plans as in what we go be, what we go be best at. This is when we learn who we are, find our identity as a team. You know, we're gonna be a running team, or we're gonna be a run stop team, or we're gonna be a pass coverage team. You know, this is where you find out in your first two weeks of training camp, and then you in then you take that into week one of the preseason. And you know, you work on your little small details, and then right now we got the Colts and the Cleveland Browns. We do joint practice in, and that's when we actually get the real work in, you know, the starters, the everyone. That's when we get the real work in. We get to compete at a high level. We trying our new coverages. They trying their new offense. So that's when the stuff really get hit, get going. Like, and it'd be a lot of fights. It'd be a lot of fights. I don't been in the training camps a couple of times. I don't think I probably had a fight in every training camp. 
because uh the fact that definitely if they joint practices, you you go get into it, it's gonna be too competitive, it's gonna be too high, it's gonna be competing way, way too high. And some people don't know how to practice. For real. No, but a lot of people do not know how to practice against another team. They be out here trying to knock your head off and do this and do that. But uh, you know, it'd be fun though, because I like I said, you get tired of going against each other. But when them days going on, them were the days you get the best work in training camp, man, against another team. And we got two joint press, and that's against the Colts, our former OC. So I know all your tricks now. I'm looking forward to it. And then we got the uh, Cleveland Browns. We're going to get some last year, you know, so it's going to be some great matchups with me and Coop. And, you know, uh, get it. we're going to get some work in. And, you know, D4 out there. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what the kid Anthony Richardson looked like. You know, big kid, big arm, you know, ready to go challenge their receiver as well. So it's going to be a fun training camp, man. But that's the, how training camp really goes, man. You got to be in shape. You got to be, you know, because if you ain't in shape, you ain't going to be able to practice. You got to be mentally ready, you know, because you're going to be drained from practice, film, practice, film. And, you know, then you got to take care of your body, you know. So you're going to be cold tub, hot tub, massages, whatever you need to do to make sure you prepare for the week because, most likely the schedule is three days on, one day off, and then you come back again. You know, sometimes it'd be four days on, one day off, depending on what the head coach like. So it's tough. You know, it's tough on your body, and a lot of trades come through too. So that's that's when we got one of the one of the best safeties in the game at the point in time. We got Chauncey man in the trade right before. It's 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 gonna be wild, man. So this be really the most exciting part of the season and people really don't, you know, don't tell because they would like to see actual games, but training camp and joint practices and trades and stuff be going on between a lot of talking is be the fun part right here. This one to get all good right here from. So y'all be on the lookout for a lot of great things, man. And, um, you know, I'm gonna be here to talk about it. So like I said, I've been doing this 10 years finna be going on my 11th training camp. Thank you, Lord, man. It's a blessing for me to be in the league 11 years been 11 training camps, never missed one. So, uh, yeah, man, I'm looking excited for this, man. I'm going into my 11th year, man. So, man, that's the life of a offseason for your boy in training camp. We've got a new sponsor, man. For the first time ever, the NFL allowed quarterbacks to be mic'd up every single game this season. Quarterback is a new doc series that's taking a unique look at each season told through the lens of the NFL quarterbacks. The series features exclusive first-time access to Patrick Mahomes, Kirk Cousins, and Marcus Mariota from the beginning of the 2022 season following them on and off the field. Quarterbacks is out now, only on Netflix. Here is the trailer. I dedicate my life to football. I love to compete. At this point, all that really matters is winning. Why short to cousin, right? Clamps, two jet rip. Quarterback is more about the mental side. They're gonna come back. You. They come back six days from now and do it again and again and again. This is DB Talk, brought to you by Quarterbacks Only on Netflix. Hey, man, I know if y'all been watching me on Twitter, man, I done seen it hit ESPN. I done seen it hit everywhere about the DBs, man. You know, and that, that, that they don't like to hang with each other and stuff like that, man, because uh, I'm going to give y'all the background of it, man, because I know y'all need the juice of it. Y'all need the little story for it. I'm going to give y'all the truth about the DB stuff going on right now. You know, it's been going on for years. So about 2017, maybe, is when – Richard Sherman has set up a, like a little DB, a little DB retreat. So that's when the first time it kind of got started, kind of like. So he had a lot of those guys that was in the group chat. And, uh, you know, Sherman had set up like film, film time, field work. We had footwork team from Houston to come down there to work with us. A lot of guys, if y'all go look on my Instagram and stuff like that on his, got us a lot of those guys that's working out there with, you know, footwork and all of us. So, it started off right there. So at that time, it was probably like maybe 10 to 15 guys that was in the chat. You know, a lot of the elite guys, you know, I was just coming off my all pro year, pro bowl year, my first one. And, you know, so I went down there. So long story short, I think it was just me, Sherm, Xavier, Rose, Tlaib, uh. 
and one more, I think is maybe it was one more guy. I think one more guy that came out of like the probably 15 to 20 guys that was in the group chat. A lot of guys backed out at the last minute. And at that time, that's when guys was getting paid big money, you know, uh, all kind of crazy stuff, man. And I felt like me personally, like I'm a guy that love to give advice to help out the youth, to help out the younger kids, help any professional person that played my position as well. So I don't mind about giving what I do best to another guy to help him be the great too at what he does. So, and I just take it as and a lot of guys don't want to share their knowledge, you know, sometimes because uh, I don't know why we wouldn't want to do that because uh, a lot of DB, a lot of tight ends, I see tight ends linking up with each other, DNs linking, linking up with each other, quarterbacks be hanging with each other, everybody be hanging with each other besides the DBs. And I don't know why, because I'm like, why would we not hang around each other? You know what I'm saying? A lot of us probably golf. A lot of us probably play the game. And, you know, me and Sharon played the game together a lot. You know, me and Xavier Rose, we came in the same draft class together. So we were very tight, you know. So it was like, uh, it was just like, I don't know why, you know. And and we set it up, Sharon set it up, and but five people showed up. You know, a lot of people backed out at the last minute. And, you know, I'm like, dang, you know, guys I was looking forward to the working out with, man. But the guys that did stay, they helped me with my technique, a new technique I like to use now. And uh, Sherman had a lot of, a lot to do with that. But, uh, yeah, man, I'm trying to get it back started, man, you know, because I'm like the older guy now. So I'm trying to like to get it back started. I've been trying to do that all the time. I actually every year on Twitter. Hey, man, who trying to work out? You know, some guys show up, some guys don't. Me and Casey done linked up before. Casey Hayward, we linked up before, before and worked out before. Um and yeah, man, it's just like, you know, man, people be just like to go on their side and just do what they do. Uh, I think to be real, I think a lot of guys just like to be big dogs. You know what I'm saying? I feel like everybody want to have a voice. Me, it don't matter to me. You know, I got, I got five pro bowls. I've been an all pro. I, I done did it all. So it, I'm not going to have no bigger say so than the next person. You know, uh, whatever Jalen Ramsey like to do, I want to learn from him. Whatever uh, Xavier uh, Howard like to do, I want to learn from him. You know, whatever Sauce do, I want to learn from him. No matter what age group, you know, there's no big dog over me. I'm I'm open ears to everyone. That's what I don't think a lot of DBs don't have. They don't have open ears for everyone. I don't think a lot of people want to take coaching from, like, other players. No matter who's better or who's, you know, whatever. So, that's my big issue with it. I don't think guys don't want to be around guys that feel like they better than them. You know what I'm saying? Still, but you know, some guys do, but the elite guys, that's the ones that don't want to show up. The more of elite guys. So the guys that's in that elite category, they the ones that be like, maybe, maybe this elite guy won't listen to me. I'm an elite guy and I'm going to listen to you. It don't really matter to me. So that's the thing about what I think everybody need to get at, get to the point of it doesn't matter who's giving the lesson, let's all just listen and learn. And if you can learn from it, learn from it. If you can't, go to the next one to learn from it. Because there's a lot of stuff I can learn from this person, but I might can't learn from that person. So that's my big thing about it, man. I think a lot of guys that's in that elite category don't want to hang with each other because nobody don't know how to take the back seat. And that's but that's come with, man, being a masculine person, being the, one of the best in the game. They feel like they know if they get voted as the best or so what they do is work. It should work for everyone, but that's not the case. You know, some people learn different. Some people play different styles. So it's just like, um, you know, let's talk about Reeve and Shante Samuel, for instance. You know, Shante Samuel was a great off man, great, great guy that now got a pick machine. But Reeve was a amazing press technique guy. So I can learn a lot from Ashante. Hey man, what did you see right here to make you jump this route? Or I can ask Reeves what type of what you looking at in press technique. So two different styles of players, but both amazing at what they do. So. That's the thing I need to get at. And then that's what I think what a lot of guys just need to do is get, uh, just, find a, just take what you can from a player and, and put it to your game. So, man, I know this year coming up, after this season, we are having one. We done agreed to it. We was in the space. We done talked about it. So it's going to happen. If it don't happen, I'm calling you out because we do need to get together. We do need to build a brotherhood. We need, do need to wear this NFL shield together as one. It's no beef. It's none of that. Cause we don't play against each other. We just, you know, you all, you both us on defense, so we can't line up against each other. So it is what it is. So yes, man, let's get this going, DBs, man. Let's work together, man. That's what I got all for y'all today, man. Your boy been missing y'all, man. I got an episode with Rasul Douglas, man. You do not want to miss it. Make sure y'all stay tuned. Your boy Big Play Slate is out. We'll be back soon.